beyond that, and, and these are obviously guys that nobody really knows much about. Ja Reed was an offensive tackle from Central Florida. The Ravens took him in the third round. Talked about him as a developmental guy. It, with tackles, I guess it's always... Not, out, not all of us knew that Jared Gaither was going to be a guy that's going to be able to step in and play as soon as Jonathan Ogden retired. You look at guys like that and say, can you tell yet? Do you know yet if this guy is going to be an NFL type of tackle, or is it something that you're going to have to give it time? Uh, yeah, a guy like this, this guy, this is a big man now. <laughs> you know what, he's 6'7", and, and he's huge. Zeus-type size. Yeah, that's going to take a little bit of development on his part, and... and uh, but this is a big man, the technique part of it. The ideal world is if he can nail down the right side, you move Marshall Yonda in the guard where Marshall Moore belongs. Uh, having three tackles, you know, Jared Gaither notwithstanding free agency and what happens with that. Um, for him to step in right away and start, uh, a little tougher, but doesn't sure. mean he can't. He's got to learn to fight that size. The size is great, but, you know, that, that's a high base, obviously. But this is a big man, and that, that's on the right side. Uh, is an impressive athlete. He's a good pick. The Ravens without a center right now uh, after Matt Burke. Is Chris Chester a guy that you see that could be a center? I mean, Mike oh, Flynn absolutely. played around at guard for a while and then moved to the center position. Uh, is Would that be Ozzie's rationale and not going for a center? Well, and you go hot. We did, and, and the new coaching staff the same way, kind of hot, hot and cold on Chris. You know, there's no question. He's a good enough athlete, smart enough, uh, plays center and guard for you, and has held up very well for them. Um the new centers in this league are big guys. When you look at the guys younger and Wood, um, uh, this kid was Nuski that went uh, six three and a half, six four. So centers are bigger than they mm -hmm. than they used to be because everybody's got these heavy three techniques, these noses, these guys. These, Block and Haloti Nada coming up the middle. Yeah, you or Dominic right? and Sue. Boy, you better you know you better have a load with you. Um, and so Chris is athletic, a little not as powerful as you'd like on the inside, but versatile and, and a guy that, yeah, you always want better, but, boy, you're glad you got him. One more draft pick I wanted to ask you about with the Ravens. I think a lot of people are interested in is Tyrod Taylor, the quarterback from Virginia Tech. Obviously a mobile quarterback from Virginia Tech. Uh, we've seen one that has gone on to be historically good, and then his younger brother who didn't do a thing. There's an interest in Tyrod Taylor because – there's still a handful of people in Baltimore that say maybe maybe Joe's not the ultimate winner. Maybe we need to think about things like that. What did you see in Tyrod Taylor? Is he a guy that can play quarterback at the next level? No question mark. But I can see he'd be a great guy on the roster. If he can show that he can get you in and out of a game or be a great change-up guy if something happens to your starter. Good enough athlete. Maybe you can use him in some other capacity. You know, a roster spot that gives you that versatility. I, I question his ability to be a pro quarterback only because the size and the mm -hmm. numbers doesn't mean he can't. You know, I, I don't know a Seneca Wallace type could develop into that. I know he's motivated to do that. Uh, and for a late pick, not a bad one to have. Are you astonished, I mean, having essentially been fired by the Ravens for not having the right quarterback, that they have Joe Flacco, who's taken Harbaugh to three consecutive playoffs, has won playoff games, has won road playoff games, has never played in a home playoff game, that anybody could, even at this point three years in, find anything negative to say? I mean, I, I'm blown away that people could have anything negative to say about Joe Flacco at this point. Yeah, I, I don't understand it, but you're a victim of your own success. You know, you've seen it time and time again, you know, until you can get to that next step. Uh, what do you think of Joe? I mean, I think I, I, you would have been delighted to have him as your quarterback, right? No, absolutely. Oh, are you kidding me? I love this kid. I mean, he's his ability to play fake, it's not easy. Turning your back to the defense the way they do a lot. A lot of quarterbacks, I could, Warren Moon would never do it for me. He just says, Brian, I'm not turning. I'm, I'm going to watch secondary rotation. So don't think you're going to get this play fake and I'm going to come out of it. That's just not what I do. And he's right. He shouldn't have. Uh, that's a lot harder than you think. And Joe's How long very, does that fight last when you're talking to a Hall of Famer like Warren Moon? We've been doing 15 years. Yes, sir. Yes, he comes running off the field after throwing a couple touchdowns. It's uh, okay. You got it. But it's different with a veteran quarterback, oh, sure, right? When, when sure. he says, I'm not comfortable with that. Right, and you can't put them in a situation they're not comfortable with. Joe's very comfortable with turning his back to the defense. He's very good at it. Uh, the, only, the next step for Joe, a la uh, Matt Ryan, who he'll be compared with forever, um, Matt Ryan from day one has had that entire team throw on his shoulders. The no huddle offensively, that's how they're mm -hmm. going to do it. Because they're good, so good on defense, because they've run the ball so well. Joe, only in certain instances, it's, okay, now, you know, defense and running game will win it for us. Uh, not working, okay, son, go win it for us. you got to do it a little bit more. I mean, you got to, 
you got to practice that a lot more. You've got to be put in that position a lot more. And he will as you move on. But it's not the nature of what they're doing. That's why Matt Ryan's ahead of him right now, because Matt Ryan's had to do that his entire career in Atlanta. Joe's been – he's got other assets around him. But that will continue to grow, and, and uh, I think he's – I think he's – approaching one of the top tier quarterbacks while we're on Flacco and while we've talked lockout and all this stuff I don't think there's any question that Joe Flacco being out in Arizona throwing footballs to teammates says all that you need to know about the dedication the players have uh, to staying sharp even though there are no OTAs and as you said the players are happy there are no OTAs at this point but for these teams that have a jump start, that have relationships, that have leadership. You know, I mean, the question we're always with Joe, where's the leadership, where's the leadership? I text Joe two weeks ago. Joe texted me back. said, dude, I'm out in Phoenix throwing footballs to guys. That's what we're doing out here. We're trying to become a better football team. And there are so many teams in the league that aren't going to have that. I mean, it, this is going to be a very, very wild year for what the result is and what happens on the field. I think because what you see when you look at the layout of the draft, I made this observation before. If it if it continues this way, you know, normally we've had what a minimum of of five to six teams change over in the playoff picture, and for the last 15 years, we could see a lot more status quo. And when I look at the draft, I think the rich got richer. I look at the front end of the draft, I don't see anybody on the front end that, that you know is trying to draft and move back into the playoffs, notwithstanding Atlanta and, and uh, because they moved up into the draft and, and probably uh, Dallas. I don't see where a lot of teams got substantially better in the front end of the draft. What did you think of the Atlanta move? Uh, you know what? I'll, uh, he is an impact player. Your it's your brother-in-law, so we, we sure. should also you know, quantify but that. 13 and 3. You've given Matt Ryan another weapon. Uh, it was a lot to give up. But if that's, he, the, he could be a difference maker for that team in this year. Now, if he is, then you've given up a late first-round draft choice, same as the second. Or if something tragic happens, then all of a mm -hmm. sudden now it's like with us in Atlanta. Atlanta thought they were going back to the Super Bowl. And us trading, they gave him the, the pick, and we we were going to get a 32nd round, you know, 32nd pick of the draft. Next thing you know, we got 31, right? Next thing you know, we got Jamal Lewis, right? Yeah, because it was the fourth pick of the draft because they fell off the table. Right. So it's going to be judged ultimately on what that first round pick is next year. But this is a good football team that got better. You want to come back and go around the first round? Yeah, sure. let's do that, man. Let's all step right, back, take good. a break. Glenn Clark's here, Brian Billick's here. It's all brought to you by Coors Light. We are at Padonia Station tonight, hanging out, talking some football. Drinking beer and, uh, you know, they're not playing any football. We might as well sit and talk about it. Back for more right after this.